Hi everyone, I'm Scott Micklin. We are at the Farmington Museum. It is the opening of Sherlock Holmes, the exhibition, and we'll take you uh, for a look at the newest exhibit at the Farmington Museum right after this on KSJE On The Road. KSJE On the Road is supported by San Juan County, building a stronger community since 1887. San Juan County includes the San Juan County Sheriff's Office, San Juan County Fire and Rescue, San Juan County Office of Emergency Management, and Riverview Golf Course in Kirtland. The mission of San Juan County is to provide responsible public services through the direction of the County Commission while striving to be professional, courteous, and committed to improving the quality of life for citizens that it serves. Learn more at sjcounty.net. <laughs> KSJE On the Road is supported by Four Corners Economic Development, supporting and building economically vibrant businesses and communities in the Four Corners region through effective partnerships. Foresaid is a public-private partnership that unites county and municipal governments with its member businesses and other resource partners to build the intentional economic future of San Juan County. Learn more about the ways Foresaid is helping existing businesses thrive and grow and attracting new businesses to the community at the number four cornersed.com. There are days when the weight of the world is heavy on your shoulders. But there is something you should know. You are never alone. There are beautiful people in this world who will walk with you when you feel off course guide you when you need it most. They are there for you. And they're closer than you think. KSJE On the Road is supported by the San Juan County Partnership, whose mission is working together with people of all ages and cultures to develop community wellness and prevention awareness. The San Juan County Partnership is a nonprofit community action agency facilitating collaboration and resource identification and sharing. The partnership provides prevention programming for youth and families, raising awareness of prevention efforts, supporting community planning activities and projects, and serves as a forum for community input, networking, and research sharing. My name is Sherlock Holmes. Forgive me for not greeting you in person. I require your assistance. You must go to the crime scene and examine it with a fresh eye. Test Scotland Yard's findings. Trust the evidence, not the theories. Collect the data and record your observations in your notebooks. Hurry along now. The game's afoot. KSJE On the Road is supported by Kaiser Millennium Levitt Insurance Agency with local offices in Farmington and Durango. Kaiser Millennium Levitt Insurance provides their clients a consultative, customized approach for discovering and mitigating risk. Their four-step comprehensive approach includes commercial insurance, employee benefits, personal insurance, and proactive safety and HR tools for growth-oriented businesses. Kaiser Millennium Levitt Insurance Agency. I love my job. I make a difference in someone's life today. 911, what is the address of your emergency? Please help me, my I'm child. Sending the paramedics to help you the stand the ward. The payoff to know that my career provides someone with the help they need when they need it. That's why I do what I do.
And welcome back to the Farmington Museum. I'm Scott Micklin with KSJE On The Road, joined by Krista Chapman from the city of Farmington. Good afternoon, good morning, good day. Yes, hello. Good to see you. <laughs> good to see Assistant you. Assistant Director of Cultural Affairs for yes. the city of Farmington. Thank you for in inviting us into your beautiful home. It's lovely. Oh, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Very Victorian. Very Victorian, <laughs> very much. No, actually, we are in the middle of the exhibit, aren't we? Yes. Sherlock Holmes, the exhibition here at the Farmington Museum. and. Uh, it's uh, it's very uh, interesting, very unique, I would yeah. say, right? I mean, it's like we just went back in time, like yes. 100 years. Yep. And that's by design. Full immersion, yes, it is. Yep. Very mm -hmm. cool. And so this exhibit is here at the Farmington Museum until September, right? The, yeah, September 28th. Okay. And, and folks get a chance to kind of, uh, I guess, become part of the investigation, right? Isn't that what's going yeah. on? Yeah, absolutely. There is a murder mystery that you get to solve as part of the exhibition, along with learning all kinds of history um, about Sir Conan Arthur, Do or Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. There we go. That Whew, guy, a lot right? of names. The, au yeah. the author the of author. the Sherlock Holmes stories, yeah. right? So it starts with him and uh, just talking about his life as a physician and how that influenced the writing of the books and how that actually influenced forensic science and detective work today in real life. Um, then you get to learn some science. You get to learn more about Sherlock Holmes. You get to help him solve a mystery. And then you get to see how Sherlock Holmes has really infiltrated pop culture. Interesting. And yeah. so, in this era, the late, I guess, 1800s, basically, yep. right, is kind of when science was becoming more a part of police investigations and yeah. things like that, right? Yeah, it was right on the verge. And a lot of medical um, science, you know, things was emerging at the time um, where they were really starting to uh, not just guess or... or Right. You know. Like do, they used to do yeah, exactly. before. Yeah, Or sure. just, uh, you know, wave uh, things around in the air. You know, they started to really look at the science of how the body works and um, how uh, watch, you know, observing the power of the observation of real people's injuries and deaths and how they could start to apply that to crime scenes. So, Interesting. And yeah. that, I guess, is why those books... Um, were so popular, those Sherlock yeah. Holmes series, right? Were yes. so very popular at that time. Yeah. Because they were using some of those theories in the actual storytelling. Yeah, exactly. Conan Doyle was quite disappointed in a lot of the murder mysteries um, that were being written at the time because they were based on nothing. He was a huge fan of Edgar Allan Poe because he was doing a bit of a, you know, an effort to try and connect the, the real clues to the, to the outcome. So he was fed up with murder mysteries, so he decided to, to create his own uh, genre. Interesting. So, yeah. And so here we are. We're sitting mm -hmm. in the study, I guess. You're like Holmes' study, yes. right? Yes. So this is 221B Baker Street. So famous this is, address. yeah, the very famous address that Sherlock Holmes uh, does all of his business uh, out of with Watson. Right. Um, and it's just full of tidbits from the stories. Um, uh, just all of the things that are referenced. Um, you can, and then there's a yeah, it's a booklet you I'm have hold there. It up because I'm not a hand model, but you know. Um, you there's get the a little idea. booklet that helps you get through the exhibition and, and find you know leads you through making sure you don't miss anything. But there's right. an I Spy in there where you get to look for all of the famous things like uh, his violin that he played, the the shoe that him and Watson uh, hid their tobacco in. Um, right. Okay. So yeah, a lot of fun fun tidbits. And all those things are part of this exhibit, yes. obviously, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And so this exhibit came from where? Because I think the story of how it got to Farmington is interesting as well. Yeah, so uh, this is out of uh, Minnesota. So um, in, in partnership with the University of Minnesota there. Um, it was right. actually developed in Portland. But yeah, so Julie Baird, our assistant city manager, really fell in love with this exhibit. Uh, she saw it in Dallas pre-COVID. Um, and we did even do community input to see how much people um, were, you know, if they were interested in it. And it actually tied with Tyrannosaurus, which we had here a few years ago. It was very popular wow. exhibition. Okay. Uh, we reached out to them, and it was way out of our price range oh. <laughs> initially. Nice try. So, so thanks, yeah. but no thanks, I but guess, we, at that time. Yeah, we ran into, Julie and I were just in Baltimore at an a American Alliance of Museums conference, and we ran into the exhibit company, and um, the tour schedule had gotten uh, canceled momentarily it was supposed to go overseas and they weren't able to do that um, so they're like it's in storage we you know we really want this to be it's too beautiful to be in storage so we were able to negotiate a really great deal that we could afford here in Farmington how about that and that is 
sure is that, that we can keep our ticket prices more affordable than than right. a lot of the big cities so that our community can still enjoy it. So in about a month, we went from not even knowing this was an option to having uh, it here, that wow. we're sitting in the middle of it. It was a quick, yeah. quick turnaround. How about that? And this is a pretty big exhibit as yes. far as exhibits go. I mean, yeah. it, it fills... Um, the large exhibit hall here at the Farmington Museum, and then some, because yep. there's some spillover a little bit too, yeah. right? Yeah, so it's made to go up to 10,000 square feet, which is really large, and um, we're in about a 7,500 square foot space here, but we did have um, some um, artifacts that wouldn't fit, so we actually partnered with the library. So the library is hosting quite a few of the illustrations from the books. and um, The they, more literary part of exactly. the exhibit, I suppose, over at the library. Yeah, Makes sense. exactly. So there's some of it here, but mm -hmm. yeah, so really beautiful illustrations that tie directly to the books. And then they also um, have uh, included this in part of their summer reading programming. So they have bought a bunch of free Sherlock stories. So if you go visit them and see the rest of um, the other piece of the exhibit, you can maybe pick up a book as well. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, there's so much um, as part of this setting where we are. This is just a small part, basically, everybody, of, mm -hmm. of the exhibit. We're in the study, as mm -hmm. Krista Chapman said, but there's so much more. There's another whole area of this exhibit, which is a crime scene, yes. which is really where the, um, I guess, junior detectives yes. get to really prove their mettle and, and see if they can solve the mystery. Yeah. And that's also part of this. Yeah. And I should say junior as in maybe not professional detectives. Yes. But this right. is definitely. But for all ages, yeah. almost. I guess maybe older kids yeah the fourth Just grade say. and up is really okay. that sweet spot yeah. um there there are activities for the youngers if okay. they want to come in um we did price the tickets according to that so kids under five are free because we still want parents and people with older siblings to come enjoy it um so bring the littles along with you <laughs> right good so very but, cool yeah. but this extra room i guess is where this crime has happened yes. right and so people are asked to um, kind of look around and mm -hmm. see what you see. I mean, right now, this is what we're showing you live, and it's um, there's an overturned chair. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, a and broken statue. Broken statue. A bullet hole with blood. Oh, my. Yeah. And then there's stuff <laughs> scattered on the floor. Yes. And so that is what you're asked to kind of take a look at, mm -hmm. and now using all the detective skills you've learned right. at the earlier part of the exhibit, mm -hmm. you can see if you know what happened. Yeah, you help uh, Sherlock prove whether the police came to the right conclusions by doing some scientific experiments along the way and uh, yeah, seeing, seeing what you come up with. Very cool, lots of hands-on things yeah. too here as well, mm -hmm. which is something that I like mm -hmm. um, when I go to, to um, the museum and yeah. uh, you don't get yelled at for touching these things because you you're don't. supposed to. Yep. <laughs> so that's the, whole, that's the whole point. Exactly. Um, but I'm really excited that this is here. And as you mentioned, um, it was kind of out of the city's price range in order to keep ticket prices low and, mm -hmm. and things along that line. And you are able to negotiate getting it here and certainly the, the um, exhibit folks were happy to not have it in storage and yes. to be able to show it. Yeah. And so you have it here till September, then it goes yeah. off, I guess, on the rest of its tour. It does. I think it's going to California next. Okay. So, yep. And then a full tour. So. I bet I bet you ticket prices will not be what they are in Farmington, in no. California. No, they will be more. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe triple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, so, yeah. Uh, so that's a great deal. Yeah. And, uh, and so far, I think from the folks who've been through here, because it's been open for now, what, a couple of weeks, 10 days? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think people really have enjoyed it. Oh, Don't my you? gosh. Have you heard yeah. feedback? Yeah, we have heard feedback. People are loving it. Um, yeah, the just big smiles nice, <laughs> of all which is ages. What you want. Yeah, I actually have some family friends that came through, and they did have a a, a little one about six, and they kind of rushed um, through it with her, and then we're like, we're coming back, we have to come back. It, there's so much to see, so that was exciting to hear. There so. really is a lot, and as yeah. you said, it really takes you from kind of the early part of um, the late 1800s to mm -hmm. talk about kind of where science was at the time yeah. and takes you then through the exhibit and then there's another part um, after the investigation but I do want to show um, some video from that area of this exhibit even more of where this crime scene is as we are talking about it because yeah. then it goes into more modern day stuff as well but yeah. this is kind of the the crime scene that we were talking about and yep. a little more closer look at some of the evidence that's uh, strewn about yeah and uh, and see what you can try to figure out of what happened here yep and again really hands-on fun stuff we have docents here too to help you get through it so Good. they'll give Make sure you, you don't miss something maybe. exactly they'll okay. give you as many hints or help as you want so 
Good to know. Yeah. Very good. And then again, there's a modern part of this exhibit mm -hmm. too, which is what I wanted to ask you about. And that is um, kind of towards the end of the exhibit, but mm -hmm. it talks a little bit about um, more modern um, crime and criminology, I guess. Yes. So again, some of the, they sp you know, specifically look at things like ballistics and blood spatter um, and some of the areas that these novels truly um, crafted, you know, how forensic science still works today. So they right. have some modern forensic science that you can um, see what they're doing and how that has evolved, though a lot of it really hasn't changed. It's still based on just doing um, hands-on experiments and seeing how what you see in front of you matches up, you know, to different methods of right. getting there. With all the stuff we hear about DNA and things like that, it yep. still comes down to just what do you see, mm -hmm. what does it look like, mm -hmm. and what are your, I guess, what are your instincts, yeah. which were really big, I think, in Sherlock Holmes' day, yeah. of what he thought happened. Yes, exactly. Well, he would say it was all science. Well, Some true. of his assumptions were spectacular. Okay, but <laughs> That's true. You know, there's a little bit of wonder, right. you know, that you still have to. <laughs> and for some of the folks who love pop, the pop culture part yeah. of this, I know, um, and I missed this the, the first time I was here was looking at the exhibit, but um, you've got a movie prop, a big movie prop in the lobby of the museum. Yeah, it's a car that was driven uh, by uh, Robert Downey Jr. in one of the movies, or in the movie. Right, Yeah. and he played Sherlock Holmes. Yes, he played Sherlock Holmes. And it's, it's an old... Um, looks like gas-powered kind of yeah, car from the early 1900s is what it's supposed to look like, right? Yes, it is. Yes, inspired by that, though it is uh, fantastical, and it's actually an electric car. How so. cool is that? <laughs> yeah. But we can't drive it. No. No. Okay. No. What? Yeah, when we were installing it, Darn one it. guy got to sit in it and steer, cool. and he felt pretty cool. Yeah, that would <laughs> so, be that yeah. would be very, very cool. Mm -hmm. That would be very but cool. But yeah, if you're a fan of all the BBC stuff, I mean, there's just been tons of Sherlock um, integrated into pop culture since the early 20s and silent films. Right. Um, so a, a look at a lot of the props and different um, cool things that have come out of that. So Exactly. And again, that whole era, that whole Victorian era, mm -hmm. which I think, at least to me, I, I think it's very fascinating because, again, science was becoming yep. such a big deal. There was a lot of really high architecture and just a mm -hmm. lot of just knickknacks and things, as you can see around us. Well, steampunk, you know, yeah. Sherlock Holmes is part of that movement as well, or influenced that steampunk movement. So right. you'll see a lot of that looking stuff in here. Very true. <laughs> so, yeah. And like the Jules Verne kind of stuff too mm -hmm. is from that era as yeah, well. Yeah, if you think of Jules Verne as being the real influencers of steampunk, but Sherlock Holmes was one of the influential stories in developing that. Right, so, definitely. Yeah. And, uh, and really fascinating. And mm -hmm. so this is really exciting. Again, it's here till September. Yeah. And uh, folks can come in. I wanted to mention too that I've noticed a lot of bilingual signage yes. throughout this whole exhibit which mm -hmm. is by design as well which is really yeah. kind of cool so there's spanish and english mm -hmm. to explain what we're seeing and what's going on yes and the little um notebooks are yeah, also in both in languages spanish as well yeah so again same family friends i was talking about they had to come through because they were like we have to see more um they were actually uh half of them were from visiting from mexico oh. so they really enjoyed it yeah i would think so, <laughs> so yeah. that's that's really cool mm -hmm. and so again just looking around where we are in the study here um, there, there's, you know, there's a fireplace, mm -hmm. the fire going. Mm -hmm. um, there's just big pieces of furniture, just that big, heavy Victorian look, mm -hmm. and all the right in the middle lighting. of the museum. Kind yeah. of spooky, yeah. It's we added spooky. our own too, yeah, exactly. even more spooky. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's a dark, very immersive show. It looks really beautiful. So, um, yeah, hopefully you can spend about an hour going through here and being transported back in time. So, <laughs> no kidding, very true. Yeah. And, uh, and really immersive. And there's a soundtrack, too, to mm -hmm. this whole exhibit as well that people maybe can hear in the background a little yeah. bit. So this actually was developed in part by people who uh, worked on Broadway and in theater. So it's got a very dramatic, very well done um, feel. The story and the murder mystery as you go through was actually written by a famous author who, who studied Sherlock Holmes his whole life. So it is, um, yeah, it's just uh, an extravagant experience through and through, visually you know, orally, the experience of the history, they've done a really beautiful job of telling the story. Nice. So. And and that's kind of what it seems to me a modern museum exhibit tends to be these days. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more immersive, a mm -hmm. lot more 
um, hands-on, yeah. educational, yeah. learning through experience, that kind of thing. And that's what you kind of look for, I assume, when you're looking for exhibits to yes, bring? Yes, absolutely we do. I mean, um, just, yeah, I mean, the world is changing, but I think just perspectives on how you can interact with things are changing as well. And so we all want to have experiences. We don't want to just look at something through the glass, though there is some of that. You sure. know, there, there are true artifacts in here. Um, there's human bones. Okay. <laughs> just, cool and creepy but also can be culturally sensitive so, sure. so we do try and uh, we put out warnings about that but so there's some looking at you know through the glass but then we want you to actually feel like you're part of that so you make memories with the people that you visit the, the exhibit with right yeah. it's almost and I know it's not quite but it kind of like has an escape room kind of quality mm-hmm. to it Mm-hmm. Um, where you could work with a team or your mm-hmm. family to try to figure out these yeah. questions, these mysteries, and, and solve it together. Yeah, we've been, you know, I was like again, not to get probably infringing on trademark, but yes, oh, it sorry. does very. No, 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 it's okay. I, I do it too. It's I very it, escape didn't. room. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, when we looked at setting, you know, the ticket prices for adults at fifteen dollars, it's like, oh man, that's a little bit more than we've charged in the past. But, um, but we think given everything that you get to experience, um, it makes it you know still affordable but also competitive with with what other things are going on right yeah well that's great and again i always like to give a shout out to the city that Uh keeps admission Mm -hmm. to the regular museum free Uh Uh, donations are always appreciated Mm -hmm. but i mean that's a that's a big deal Mm -hmm. i think to be able to allow folks to come in Mm -hmm. and see the exhibits here at the museum this one there is an additional admission charge because it is an additional um price on the exhibit yeah and so again the price again for, so adults, 15, so right? yeah, so um, uh, let's see, 13 and older is $15, uh, 6 to 12 years old is 10 and then 5 and under are free. Okay. Um, also, if you are with a organized group of youth, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, a school. It can be a school, but if you are a Boy Scout or Girl Scout leader or... Um, have a daycare uh, we we do have if you want to book ahead we give a really discounted um, price to the kids and then chaperones get in for free so you can call and book those um, we also have a corporate party option for this because like you said there's some team building right murder mystery you know solving um, aspects of it um, and it's just a really fun um, exhibit for adults and, and older teens so um, if you want to do a corporate party or team building we also have that option very very good and before we go we're almost out of time but uh-huh. i did want to mention um, the Museum Foundation, I think, played a role oh, yes. in bringing Thank this you. to Thank the you, area, right? <laughs> yes, as always, they are very supportive. They did front a large piece of the price tag for this, again, to help us keep costs low and to make this possible for our community. So um, thank you, thank you to the Museum Foundation. They fully sponsored Survival, so back to back, they have stepped up to bring incredible experiences to our community. Very so. good. And if I'm a member of the Muse- Museum Foundation, I get a ticket, don't I? You do. You get in free. So, um, so yeah, I think a family membership is 50 bucks and you get five people in free. So it's a great deal um, for you. Plus you get entrance into other museums across the nation with a reciprocal. Um, So yeah, if you like uh, what the foundation is doing um, to help support this, certainly consider membership, consider joining their board. There you (laughs) You go. So always need help to keep these things going. And, and I think, too, if you're a member, you would have gotten a deal on Survivor, too. Yes. Or the so Survival t- Yes, Survival. Exhibit. So, so two this year. You yeah. got two free entrances this so year. So that's a good deal. Yeah, it, it is. makes it worthwhile, mm-hmm. but terrific. Well, yeah. thank you so much for talking with me today sure. in the middle of uh, Sherlock Holmes' study. How yeah. cool is this? And, uh, and it's so exciting that this is going to be here until um, September. So mm-hmm. thank you, Krista, very much. Thank you, Scott. It is Sherlock Holmes, the exhibition now on display at the Farmington Museum. And this has been KSJE on the road.
KSJE On the Road is supported by Kaiser Millennium Levitt Insurance Agency with local offices in Farmington and Durango. Kaiser Millennium Levitt Insurance provides their clients a consultative, customized approach for discovering and mitigating risk. I love my job. I make a difference in someone's life today. 911, what is the address of your emergency? Please help me, my child. Sending the paramedics to help you stay on the board. The payoff to know that my career provides someone with the help they need when they need it. That's why I do what I do. KSJE On the Road is supported by San Juan County, building a stronger community since 1887. San Juan County includes the San Juan County Sheriff's Office, San Juan County Fire and Rescue, San Juan County Office of Emergency Management, and Riverview Golf Course in Kirtland. The mission of San Juan County is to provide responsible public services through the direction of the county commission while striving to be professional, courteous, and committed to improving the quality of life for citizens that it serves. Learn more at sjcounty.net. You must go to the crime scene and examine it with a fresh eye. Test Scotland Yard's findings. Trust the evidence, not the theories. Collect the data and record your observations in your notebooks. Hurry along now. The game's afoot. KSJE On the Road is supported by the San Juan County Partnership, whose mission is working together with people of all ages and cultures to develop community wellness and prevention awareness. The San Juan County Partnership is a nonprofit community action agency facilitating collaboration and resource identification and sharing. The partnership provides prevention programming for youth and families, raising awareness of prevention efforts, supporting community planning activities and projects, and serves as a forum for community input, networking, and research sharing. There are days when the weight of the world is heavy on your shoulders. But there is something you should know. You are never alone. There are beautiful people in this world who will walk with you when you feel off course, guide you when you need it most. They are there for you, and they're closer than you think. 